Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 224. Subscribe to our mailing list to receive weekly updates and exclusive content delivered right to your inbox. Go to drfrancisrichards.com. That's drfrancisrichards.com to subscribe to our mailing list and be entered into our monthly drawing. That's D-R-F-R-A-N-C-E. S R I C H A R D S dot com, Dr. Francis Richards dot com to subscribe to our mailing list and be entered into our monthly drawing. We promise we won't spam you or sell your information. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Frances Richards, a certified public accountant, CPA, certified tax coach, CTC, and chartered global management accountant, CGMA, with over two decades of experience helping clients achieve their financial goals through business and personal tax planning. Welcome, Susan Moranga. Hello, Dr. Richards. I'm glad to be on your show today. Thank you so much. I've given our audience such a brief bio, but it was very powerful. But why don't you fill in the gaps? Share with our audience what you'd like them to know about you and your business. Well, thank you, Dr. Richards. I mean, I, I love the intro that you already gave. It was actually absolutely amazing. But I've been a CPA for over 20 years. You know, I actually started my career working for my dad. He had a CPA firm and he hired me when I was 14 years old to be one of his bookkeepers. And I love what I did so much working with my dad that I when I went to college, I said, you know what, I want to, I also want to be an accountant. I want to major in accounting and, and be an accountant. And you know, I started off as soon as I graduated, I went to Arthur Anderson in Chicago, which was at the time the number one firm in the world. And, you know, due to things that obviously happened with Anderson, I think everybody knows about what happened to Anderson in Houston. My career shifted and I actually went to work for KPMG at that time. And at some point, my life was changing. And the company that I was with at the time, I was responsible for their Canadian operations. And I live in Houston, Texas. And I was about to have my daughter. I was probably about seven months pregnant. And I was riding in this airplane. And, and at this point, I was going to Toronto back and forth probably every two weeks at this point, right? Because when you're responsible for Canadian operations, you're literally traveling there all the time. And I was on this little propeller jet. It's what I call propeller jet. Because when you have a bunch of flights that go, you know, eventually you're going to get one of those small flights. You know, those flights that have like the two seaters on one side, the one seat on the other. And you always fight for the one seater, right? Because you don't want to sit anybody. So here I was seven months pregnant. And I was wasn't a cute pregnant person at all. You know, some people are like long, like watermelons. I was wide. I was wide pregnant. And I could hardly get into the seat. And this was the most uncomfortable three hour flight from Houston to Toronto. And as I was flying on this flight, I was it, it suddenly occurred to me that, you know, Suzanne, your life is about to change. Your life is about to change. You're about to have this little girl and you can no longer be traveling all the time. And although I love traveling, I love going to exotic places like New York and Chicago. You know, my life was going to change. And at that point, I started to really seriously consider entrepreneurship. And I started to really consider what would I do when I had my daughter that allowed me to have that balance to be able to achieve what I wanted to be able to really raise, be the mom that I really wanted to be, right? And not have nannies raise my daughter, you know, and so hence Mariga CPA was born. And I remember when I first started my business, I was so excited. I was so excited because, you know, it was me and Florence, little Florence. Florence is my daughter's name. And I would bring her to like the women business owners, operational meeting. She was like the mascot of all these women business owners, <laughs> you know, like, like literally she would like, you know, everybody would coo at her. She would love the attention, you know, when she wasn't getting enough attention, she'd throw fries, you know, she was like the mascot. But as my business grew, I started finding that I had less and less time, right? Because, you know, as your business grows, you know, you're focusing on getting the work done. You're focusing on business development. And I love what I did so much. I would have did taxes for free, Dr. Richards. I would have done taxes for free. <laughs> I love what I did. 
And like many entrepreneurs, you know, we get in our businesses because we love what we do, right? We love what we do so much that we would do it for free. You know, no matter what you're doing, we love changing the world. This is the gift that God gave us and we want to share it with the world. And so what I thought to myself is, you know what, if I just do a great job and I super serve my clients and I drop my prices, right, and make it enticing for, you know, under the competitor's price, that naturally, naturally business would just come to me, right? Naturally business would kind of be volume based, right? The more work you do, the lower your price, naturally you're going to, the profits are going to follow, right? And so what happened was, you know, as I was growing my business, attracting customers because I was showing below market or, or my prices were way below market and I was super serving my clients. Naturally, clients came. But what I was finding was I was not getting anything that I wanted. You know, I had started this business to spend time with Florence, right? And I had started this business to super serve my clients. But what I found myself doing was in this 80 hour week, making less than what I made working at my corporate job. And it was one Sunday night that my husband sat me down at dinner and he said, do you know what, Suzanne? And he goes, and it was actually worse at this point. It was actually worse because now I had two kids, right? I had Emmanuel, <laughs> Lawrence's brother. And the worst thing about that was I didn't even get to see both of them because at this point, you know, they did have a nanny raising them. And he goes, you know, Suzanne, I think you'll be better off if you just get a J-O-B. And you guys know, you, you guys, you know, you guys are entrepreneurs. That's like our worst nightmare, right? We will work 80 hours just to not have to work 40 hours. That is what we do as entrepreneurs. And here my husband was telling me, you know what, Suzanne, you'd be better off getting a job. And my heart was crushed. And he was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. I would have been better off getting a job. And the reason why was when at my corporate job, I made more money, right? I had a fixed paycheck. They needed all the price negotiations. They weren't giving away their stuff for free. I also loved what I did. And frankly, they still wanted me. But the problem was what was keeping me in that cycle was I never, ever sat down and decided what I wanted. I never sat down, put it on paper and decided what was the business outcome that I wanted. And it wasn't until that I really decided what I wanted, what was important to me, how much my business needed to generate for me in order for me to actually be in business and continue doing this, that I actually started to get what I wanted. And the reason why it's so important to decide what you want at the end is because the actions that you need to take, the strategy that you need to take, right, becomes more apparent when you know what the end goal was. And what the game changer was for me was really the concept of profit first. And, you know, what profit first is, you know, when we go to business school and, and I went to business school and one of the first thing they teach you in business school 101 is revenue minus expenses equals profit, right? Revenue minus expenses equals profit. And what that means, right, that's called just general accepting accounting principles, right? That's just U.S. GAAP, right? SEC companies have it. It's, it's U.S. GAAP. But the problem with that equation is when we're teaching our entrepreneurs revenue minus expenses equals profit, what we're teaching them is, you know what, focus on sales, focus on sales, grow, 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 discount your prices, get whatever, get, do whatever you need to do to get customers to the door because naturally it's a value-based business. Be responsible about your expenses, right? Don't get in debt pay off your debt, pay your bills, right? And then naturally, profit will be what will follow. But what happens at the end of the day, and, and you know, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, I was not alone, that most of these entrepreneurs don't even know what their profit is until tax time happens and a CPA is like, you know, by the way, you owe this amount. And they're like, well, where's the cash? How am I going to pay this? I think I'm going to have to finance last year's bill with this year's money and then finance next year's, right? With the IRS. So the IRS becomes a bank to these entrepreneurs. And really the problem with that is, you know, when we focus on sales and we when we focus on being responsible, profit is this random byproduct that happens afterwards. And so what we teach in Profit First is, you know what, as we need to teach our entrepreneurs to take their profit first. We need to prioritize our profit. Revenue minus profit equals expenses, meaning after you fund your profit, after you pay your profit, right, then whatever's left over <laughs> goes to expenses. And so literally we flip the accounting equation. We flip the accounting equation because your business should work for you. And talk about this amazing strategy and book, Profit First. And so, you know, I love Dr. Richards. I love Profit First. So how Profit work First works is very similar to like, you guys have heard about Dave Ramsey, right? Who hasn't heard about Dave Ramsey? I love some Dave Ramsey. He's got the envelope system, right? And in Dave Ramsey's system, what happens is, you know, when you get your paycheck, right, you pay yourself first, right? You have these envelopes, right? Please, nobody keep them underneath your, your mattress. But... <laughs> You have these envelopes and you're literally are funding these envelopes with money. And so we do the same thing with, with businesses. What happens is, you know, we create bank accounts that act as envelopes. So all of our money comes into these envelopes, right? Which are bank accounts. Like we have a bank, a checking account called an income account. And all of your money is coming into us. Well, every time you make a sale, it's deposited into this income account. Whenever your merchant services pays you, it's deposited into this income account. And then what happens is twice a month, and we usually like the 10th and 25th because we find that bills are either due the first of the month or they're due at the end of the month. 
And so that's the reason why we like the 10th and 25th. And what happens on the 10th and 25th is that money is transferred from the income account into these other bank accounts. And these other bank accounts are one, your profit account, right? We pay your profit first. So we have a, a transfer that goes into the profit account. And this is based upon a percentage that we determine upfront what this is. And in profit first, we actually determine what a healthy company is. And we determine that prop percent is based upon that. So, and that's based upon your revenue, but it goes into this profit account. And then we have another transfer that goes into your owner's pay account, right? And that's the money that you're going to make as an owner, right? Because as a business owner, you need to give yourself a reasonable salary, right? I don't know how many times I ask business owners, I'm like, who's your most valued player? Who's your MVP on your team? And so many times they'll tell me, oh, it's Chrissy, it's Jackson, it's Tom, it's Tiffany. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What would happen if you stepped out of your company? What would happen if you stepped out of your company? You are your MVP. If you did not show up every day, if you were not the brand, if you did not make decisions, your company wouldn't run. I don't care how great Tiffany or John or or, or Max is, your company wouldn't run without you. You are the MVP. And so you need to be compensated as if you are the MVP. And so yes, in Profit First, we have an owner's pay account where you are giving a salary and we prioritize that over any expenses. And then the other account that we have is a tax account, right? We have a tax account. And this tax account is, you know what? We got to reserve for taxes up front, right? We got to reserve from taxes up front. We can't just keep waiting till the end of the year to find out what our tax obligation and figure out how we're going to pay it. We need to be putting aside money for taxes along the way. And so what we do is we have this account, a savings account for taxes that we're also funding. And so after we fund our profit account, our owner's pay account, and our tax account, whatever's left over, whatever is left over, that's going to go to operating expenses. So that's where we're going to literally fund, like, you know, if we need to hire employees, if we need to buy supplies, if we need to buy new computers, right? That's where we fund that. And it's important that we strategize what we want, Dr. Richards, is because if we don't strategize what we want up front, what happens is our businesses are cash eating monsters, right? They will always need a bigger office space because we might just grow into it one day, right? We will always need a fancier computer. And by the way, our employees, need matching ones too, right? Because they need fancy computers. Business always needs something. But until we prioritize what we want, our businesses have no limits. You know, one of the things that I think about is like, you know, I always make the analogy of when uh, of plates, right? Plate size. You know, when you first go on a diet, one of the first things they tell you is use smaller plates, right? Because if you use smaller plates, you're going to eat less. Well, you know, I always think of the analogy of when I go to Golden Corral and I have to admit, I love a Golden Corral. Don't tell nobody. I love a Golden Corral. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love a Golden Corral. Problem with Golden Corral is the plates are huge, right? They're 12 inch plates, they're stacked on top of each other. You can get a bread plate, a salad plate, then you get a main course plate and a dessert plate, and then you know there's gotta be seconds, right? At a Golden Corral. Now, usually when I leave Golden Corral, I don't feel too proud of myself, right? And I and I'm on like a, a fast that I will never ever do this again. Well, when I go out to an order of dinner, right? When I go out to an order of dinner, it's a business event, and I'm wearing this suit that's probably already two sizes too small to make myself look good. And I'm like squeeze in here like a sausage. You know, the plate's like five inches, right? The plate is five inches. And I can literally only get five things on the plate without looking really bad, right? What happens in this order of dinner is I eat a whole lot less than if I had gone to the Golden Corral, right? And you know, the interesting part about it is I actually feel better. I still feel full eating at the order of dinner, right? But I've made a whole lot of different choices along the way. And that's exactly how Profit First works by creating this bank account. It's something called Parkinson's Law, right? Meaning that we as human beings, we're efficient. We use everything that we have, right? If we're given two weeks to do a project, we will finish that project in two weeks. If we're given one day to finish that project, we will finish that project in one day. We are efficient human beings. We use what we what's available to us. Profit First, by creating this illusion of scarcity, by having these small plays that's in the concept of bank accounts, what was happening is we're training our minds to literally look at this operating expense account and go, this is all that I have left in this account. This is all that I can spend. And so I'm going to make very different decisions than if everything's available to my cash eating monster. Talk about your book. You wrote a book called Profit First. And when can they purchase the book? I am so excited about this book. I am so excited. The book is called Profit First for Minority Business Enterprises. I'm actually writing it in partnership with Mike McCallowitz, who is the original author of Profit First. And the thing that made me really want to write this book was, you know, as minority business owners, right, we have a different set of struggles, right? I mean, granted, the cash flow is, is the this cash strategy is just about the same, but we have a different set of struggles because a lot of times we are first generation to do this. You know, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, right? Right. I am a Gen Xer, right? And growing up, you know, there weren't a lot of great role models on TV, right? That were doctors or lawyers or physicians. There were a lot of of entertainers that were on TV, but not a lot of of really 
powerful examples of people that have used their minds and their talents that were outside of entertainment to really, really take their family legacies to a different point. And a lot of times what I found is, you know, you know, when I graduated from college, right, 1999, I date myself on this. <laughs> you know, I remember my mom's entire family coming down to celebrate my my graduation from Ohio State. And they were so proud because I was the first person in my mom's family to ever go to college and graduate. And this was a huge deal for them, you know, because they had come from a family of sharecroppers, right? And from North Carolina, they had come from a family of slavery, right? And they never owned their land. They were constantly working for somebody else who paid them very little for the cotton that they picked in their family. And for them, this represented a generational change. This represented a change in their legacy. And I think that there's been no time better in America. I think right now we are seeing a major shift in wealth. And I'm not talking about PPP loans and what's going on with COVID-19. There is a literally an opportunity for a generational shift in legacies right now. And don't get me wrong, you know, there there's things that happen, right? There's still discrimination. Obviously, we have the Black Lives Movement. We have that that's happening right now. And I have been in many rooms, just like you, Dr. Richards, you've been in many rooms where you were the only person of color in the room, right? Based upon your educational status, what you're bringing, you're the only person of color in the room. And I think one of the great things that we're starting to see right now is there's becoming a shift. You know, I look at Don Lemon on TV and I look at all Condoleezza Rice. I look at all these role models that were not there when I was growing up. And literally, we are seeing a well in America. And it's not just because of how we sing and how we entertain, but it's because of our mental, our mental thought leadership is what's happening. I'm writing this book because I want to really inspire us, not only inspire, but teach us the lessons that I've learned, what I've met with other entrepreneurs that have made it, that have grown seven figure businesses, what they have learned. And, and it's going to cover things from tax strategy to sales to pricing, also the profit first methodology, and really give us the tools that we don't necessarily have from somebody from generational wealth, where somebody literally passed their businesses down to us, right? Because a lot of times we, just like me, we have to make it on our own. This is the book that I'm really writing to really even the platform and allow people to change their legacies through entrepreneurship. So that book is going to come out in 2021. It's in edits right now and copywriting and all that stuff. Because whenever you work with Mike, things in Penguin, you know, nothing ever <laughs> happens overnight. You can't write a book in a month and publish it. But 2021 is when our book is coming out. And if they want to order the book, they can go to my website, my author site, which is SuzanneMariga.com. Suzanne spelled with an S, no Z, S-U-S-A-N-N-E-M-A-R-I-G-A.com. You can pre-order the book. And also you'll be able to get notifications of when we release the book so that you can be first of it. We're also going to be airing some of the interviews that we have conducted for the book too. So you're going to be able to see firsthand how literally these family legacies were able to change because of Profit First, how people were able to literally become the first millionaires in our family, you know, even though they were minorities, simply by implementing Profit First and changing their mindset and strategy. I want you to stay right there, Suzanne, when you talked about a transfer of wealth and just the opportunity with COVID-19 and not just specifically around COVID-19, however you answer the question, but that is so profound about the wealth transfer and just the mindset and how much opportunity is out there now. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dr. Richards, things have changed so much, you know. I remember when I first started my career, you know, and I started my career in the Arthur Anderson office in, in, in downtown Chicago, and I had an office of over 2,000 people. And I remember my start class, you know, there literally being only five Blacks that were were started in that class. Like, we didn't even have any Asians, you know, and I'm, I'm half Chinese and half Black. That's my background on that. And literally, that was the career that I started with, you know. And, you know, and I remember looking at my colleagues like, hey, are you going to wear that? You know, we got to represent. We got to represent. They, we, they're holding us to a different standard than everybody else. You know what I mean? And, and it's just true. And I remember like everything was manual. Everything was political. You know, you didn't get the opportunity sometimes because the partner felt more comfortable talking to somebody else that looked like him. And, you know, the world is completely shifting. First of all, one is we live in a virtual world right now, right? I think COVID has really accelerated this virtual concept and this virtual world. And I mean, look at us. We were meeting. We don't even live in the same city, Dr. Richards, and we were meeting together. And literally what used to be your market in your small town or in your small city, your market is now the world, right? Your market is now in the world. 
I remember when when COVID hit, you know, we have a brick and mortar here in Houston, Texas. But our my team, we literally looked at each other and we're like, okay, what are we gonna do now? And I was like, well, we gotta take it online. We gotta take it online because right now, you know, Houston is right underneath New York City in terms of like what's happening with the pandemic. And we gotta take it online. And so we're like, okay, we're gonna start a show. We're gonna start a show. We're gonna go on Facebook Live and we're gonna teach people profit first. And it was amazing. Like literally every single day we had a week long program and every single day for like an hour each day, we literally taught our entrepreneurs that signed up for our online free course, just a little piece of profit first. And Dr. Riches, we had people from Australia listening in, people from the UK listening in, people from New York City listening in, people from LA, Orlando, everyone was listening in and watching us and showing up every single day on our Facebook Live as we were teaching them Profit First. And literally, you know, we were getting to know them. We were we were DMing back and forth. They were asking questions in the chat. They were excited. They're like, oh my gosh, it's time. It's the hour now. It's the hour. And I'm telling you, Dr. Riches, it was like the Jimmy Kimmel show. You know what I mean? Like we had built a family on Facebook live. And literally at the end of the the course, you know, I invited people to work with me. I said, Hey, if you want to take your business to the next level, you want to learn more about profit first, I would be more than happy to work with you. And as a result, I was working with people from Las Vegas, people from Orlando, people from New York, Montana, everywhere, simply because we had taken our business online. And also we talked about, you know, the shift, the shift that's happening right now, right? Like When I was growing up in the 70s or 80s, you know, we had the Paula Abdul, we had the Whitney Houston, you know, we, these were our role models. These were our role models. And now, you know, there's this whole level of thought leadership that's coming. You got Oprah, you've got Condoleezza Rice. We were breaking barriers that have never been broken before, you know, because some of us, we're not athletic. I will never run a marathon. I will never run a marathon. And if you made me run a marathon, I probably will die. I will die for you right here if you made me run a marathon. But I will lead in thought leadership. I will do that. I will give you my thoughts. I will give you my tax strategy. And now we're literally opening opportunities that, you know what, if you can present ideas to market, you can present them unique and you can present them powerfully and you can present them in a way that can change lives. Your customer base is unlimited, no matter what the color of your skin is, because now your market isn't your small town. Your market isn't your big city. Your market is the world. And if you can change lives, people will come. Speaking of brands and businesses, What brand or business is dominating that you admire and why? You know what? There are so many brands and businesses that I admire. So many. I mean, so, so, so many. That that is a really good question. And, you know, when I think of a brand that is really going to really go to next level, I like to think of brands that really change lives, right? Brands that really change lives. And there's so many of them that's out there. You know, there, there's Dr. Ava Z. Weaver, you know, she has the perfect pitch media. I actually interviewed her for our book, Profit First. And she teaches entrepreneurs to really take their skill set and not only keep it internally, but how to get media attention, right? So how to go on the news to share what is the right media platform that you should go on. And so she's teaching entrepreneurs really to make an impact in a bigger way. So definitely check out Dr. Avis's Perfect Pitch Media and and her class on that. She's going to be in our book That's and she's going to be featured when we release the video on that. You know, amazing story behind her with that. But there are so many brands that I admire, but that's one that just comes to my mind that, you know, I just love anything that Dr. Avis does. (laughs) Talk about your top two influencers and what lessons did they teach you? The top two influencers, and this is going to be, I'm, it, it, this is going to sound kind of, of trite. It's going to be, this is going to, it's, it's going to be my parents. It's going to be my parents. You know, I would not be an accountant if it wasn't for my father, right? He hired me when I was 14 years old to be his bookkeeper. And I remember like answering his phone. I was his secretary. Hi, um, this is Ricky Chan Corporation. How can I help you? You know, because I had to call Mr. Chan because he went, nobody knew I was his daughter, right? He <laughs> went a professional appearance on there. And, but what he did was he started that seed of, you can do this. You know, it was by starting at 14, he was giving me a skill set that I didn't have. And for you entrepreneurs out there, think about giving your children a skill set, right? Because, you know, Malcolm Gladwell says it takes 10,000 hours, right? 10,000 hours to master. So if I started this at 14, by the time all my colleagues were graduating from college, right? 
by the time they were 24, I was already a master at accounting because I had already done tax returns. I had already done bookkeeping. You know what I mean? I had already done consulting, you know, because I started at the age of 14. And not only did I start at the age of 14, but really my dad got a tax deduction, right? Because if you hire your children, right? If you hire your children as entrepreneurs, you give them a tax, you get a tax deduction, you get a write-off, right? And if you hire them and they make less than a standard deduction, depending on your legal entity, this is a tax-free write-off, right? Because, you know, you don't pay taxes unless you have hired in your standard deduction. So I was giving my dad a gift of a tax write-off and he was giving me the gift of apprenticeship, right? He was allowing me to acquire a skill set that I would have never acquired, you know, had I not worked with my dad, right? So entrepreneurs, think about how can you create generational wealth? And one of the things that you can do to create generational wealth is one, teach your children how to think, bring them into the business, show them why you're making the decisions that you make. If you are letting clients go because the client doesn't want to pay your fee or they're asking to do unethical things, share those stories with your children. Share those stories with your children. Teach them how to think so that they can run their business. My dad didn't give me a legacy of millions of dollars. He couldn't do that, but he gave me the methods of thinking and the right ethical values that allowed me to generate a million dollars, right? That is what my dad did. And that's exactly what we can do as entrepreneurs. We can teach those to our children. We can teach them how to think, how to run a business, give them that gift of entrepreneurship and apprenticeship so that when they graduate later on, you know, they can go on and really have a head start on what they're doing. And besides, it's a tax write-off, right? Who wasn't want a tax write-off, right? And you can get an Roth RA too. Like if you get your kids to, to actually take their after-tax earnings, which are, by the way, zero tax, right? Depending on the, the entity that they're in, right? You can put it, the money into a Roth RA. And guess what a Roth RA is? It's an after-tax vehicle, right? <laughs> and after-tax, even though it's zero, it's still after-taxes, right? imagine being able to start saving for your children's wealth before they even start. And not only that, you know, when they go to college, right, they can actually use this money that they accumulated in this Roth IRA account to actually pay for college. They can use this money that they've earned working for mommy and daddy to pay off college. And if let's say, you know what, hey, let's say they end up being the superstar athlete, right? And they don't need to touch the Roth IRA. Well, then they can take the money and purchase their new home when they graduate, right? And if they say, you know, hey, I ended up being the superstar athlete and I'm making million dollars now because I'm an NBA basketball player, then they can use this money later on then to just retire. And all of this was built because they started working for mom and dad at the age of 14 and building their own wealth. And again, it's a wealth transfer that's happening here. So I would say, first of all, it's my dad, you know, because that was an amazing gift that he gave me at the age of 14. And then, you know, my mom too, you know, my mom, you know, she always would tell me, you know, she would just spout different biblical base scriptures to me, you know, like, do you really want to hang out with this person? Do you really want to do this? Bad associations, spoils, useful habits. And it was just a constant training from a young child, just values that allowed me to make decisions as an adult. Because, you know, as an adult, especially as an entrepreneur, you're going to be faced with decisions that you're going to have to make ethical calls. People are going to ask you, can you do this for them? And really those ethical calls are what's going to allow you to own a business that you're one day proud of. Speaking of legacy, when it's all said and done, Suzanne, how would you like to be remembered? You know what, Dr. Richards, my goal and, and I think that it, it'll always change, right? I think that things will always change, right? As we learn things, as we develop, as we grow as people, it will always change. But one of the things that's always been important to me was eradicating entrepreneur poverty, right? And I share this because I came from an entrepreneur background, you know, growing up, right? And and I faced it firsthand. You know, what I was experiencing starting my business was what I watched my dad do. I watched my dad work 80 hours a week. I watched him come home at nine o'clock at night after a long day of work that he started at seven o'clock in the morning. And I literally was just repeating that cycle, right? And it wasn't until I decided what I wanted that I really started to flip that equation. What I want to do is I want to change lives. I want to help people recreate legacies. I want to really destroy the whole concept of entrepreneur poverty. And I want to help people really create legacies that are new legacies that they can be proud of. What can we do right now to support you and your business, Suzanne? You know, I have an amazing book that's coming out. Definitely. I, I would love to get that into millions of hands. I want to change millions of lives, right? So go ahead and go to SuzanneMariga.com, S-U-S-A-N-N-E-M-A-R-I-G-A.com to go ahead and get on our distribution list so I can get you the pre-order when it when it's it, it comes released in 2021. 
Also, we have the free Profit First Masterclass. We have the free Profit First Masterclass where it's online. It's right in our, in our Facebook group, Profit First with Suzanne, Profit First Masterclass with Suzanne Maria. And I want to invite you there where I will teach you the ins and outs of Profit First. And we also have other classes too. We talk about tax strategy and all these classes are free. These are classes are free for you for joining us and just wanting to learn about Profit First and really revolutionize your business. You talked about entrepreneurial poverty. Is there another problem that exists in the world today that you'd like to solve? I was reading the scripture this morning. It was Matthew 7, 7 through 8. And, was, and the scripture is about asking, seeking, and you'll find. And I think too many times we don't, as entrepreneurs, we don't ask for the things that we want, right? We don't ask for things we want and we settle for the things that we're given, right? Whether it's what the market will pay us, right? What's easy to get, the low-hanging fruit. And we don't ask for more. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that happens in business is we don't ask for what we deserve, right? And so what happens is we get the leftovers. We get we get the low margin fruit. We get the clients that we're unhappy with. And we end up working these 80-hour weeks and we we lose our life. And it starts with mindset. It's asking for what you want and really figuring out what the strategy that you need to take in order to get there. I think that's the biggest thing that entrepreneurs can do to really revolutionize their business and eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. Tell us what you are most grateful for right now in your life. I am most grateful for my family, you know, my kids, you know, every day I look at them, you know, and and, I, and it's funny because, you know, I'm starting like, I'll give you an example. This is funny. We were driving down the street and, you know, you know, one of the first things that people start to do when they start to be successful is they buy nice cars, these really fancy homes. And, you know, and my kids, you know, my daughter is 13 and my son is, is he's about to turn 10. And we're di- driving on the street and we're visiting a friend. And, and of course, you know, they've upgraded their home into this really, really nice home. And in Texas, we have something called property taxes, right? And property taxes is based upon the value of your property, right? So the more your property is, the more you're paying taxes. And even if you make less, you're still going to pay more in taxes because it's based upon the value of your property, right? You have to consider that when you're buying a house. And so I was riding with my kids and, and you know, property appreciates, but it doesn't appreciate like double or triple. It doesn't happen like that in Texas, maybe California, but not, but not Texas. And I was talking to my kids and I was just passing on these life lessons. And I was like, they're like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't move mommy. And I'm like, well, let's think about it. First of all, if we move into this neighborhood, right, we're going to pay a lot more property taxes. In fact, our property taxes are going to double. In fact, we're probably going to pay about $30,000 in property taxes, right? Because this value of this home is three times more than ours. And if we're going to pay about 30000 property taxes, that's like a salary, right? That's like a salary. So we really want to be locked into always having to pay a salary one day. Even when I retire, do I always want to have to pay a salary for my property taxes? And, you know, and they got a chuckle about it. But it was just great just being able to pass these little morsels of wisdom. And you could see their little clickers going in the back of their eyes as they're contemplating and thinking about what mommy just said, you know, with that. But, you know, it's I, I love my kids. I'm most proud of them. And I love seeing just how they're developing and, and challenging their little minds. Are they working in the business now? You know what? They are starting to work in the business. You know, my 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 daughter's like, she likes DMing in the Facebook <laughs> I'm like, you can't go by the name of Florence, though. You cannot go and don't don't use your last name. <laughs> so, yeah, they're starting to work in the business. They make great models, too. Advice you wish you had followed? The advice that I wish I had followed. Oh, wow. And you know what? I don't know if I got this advice. I don't know if I got this advice, and I really wish that I did. You know, when I was growing up, I was a nerd. I was a nerd. I had glasses. I was a nerd. You know what I mean? I was the one that was always made fun of. And the last thing that you want to be when you're a nerd is a nerd. (laughs) The last thing, especially going to like public school systems, you know what I mean? Lower middle class neighborhood. The last thing you want to be was a nerd. And so like at some point in my teen years, I remember just like really just trying to be something else, right? Trying to date something else, be something else, be everything that I wasn't, right? And the advice that I wish that I had gotten and really sank in was, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. You just keep being who you are. That was the advice that I wish I had gotten. So talk to a younger Suzanne. What advice would you give a younger Suzanne? The younger advice, the advice I would give the younger Suzanne is keep being you. Just keep being you. What have you not done in life that you dream about often that you'd like to do? Ooh, Dr. Richard, this is a good one. This is a good one. (laughs) You know, it's funny because when I was 25 years old, I was working at Anderson in Chicago. 
And I got this pop-up email on my email. And it says, right now, right now, right now, if you pick this offer right now, and I used to travel a lot for Anderson, for $600, $600, you can go to, you can go to France for the weekend. You can go to France for the weekend for $600. And, and that was a steal. I mean, for a weekend trip, it was like one of those mileage plus type of deals that happened. And I remember like quickly just jumping on my phone and, you know, back then, you know, you had to pay some money for some minutes to be on your phone. You know what I mean? You only got like 25 minutes a month. <laughs> and I remember jumping on my phone. I remember calling all my friends. I'm like, you won't believe this. We just got a deal that we can go to Paris, France for $600. $600, that's it. And every friend that I called told me, you know what, Suzanne, I'm not in the place to do this right now. I'm either still wrapping up school or I don't have the finances, they told me. But at the age of 25, I simply said, you know what, there'll be another opportunity. There'll be another opportunity to go. And what happened was, you know, by the time I was in my 30s, my business was growing and I was I'm hustle and bustle and I was vested in the business. And you know the story. It was, I mean, we, we were Goldman Sachs 10,000. We were getting government contracts. Our world was changing, right? And so I didn't have time. I didn't have time in my 30s. And plus, my husband wasn't quite interested in going to Paris because, you know, he was building his own career at that point. And, you know, working for corporate, he only had like two weeks of vacation. He can't really go to Paris for two weeks. And it wasn't until my 44th birthday that I actually got to go to Paris, France. And I actually decided I still couldn't get my friends to go. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to chuck it. I'm going to go alone. I'm going to go alone. And I had the best time in the world. I went to the Moulin Rouge for my for New Year's Eve. It was the best time in the world. So the one thing that I want to do left that I have not done is I actually want to live there for at least three months in the summertime and bring the kids and just run my business remotely from Paris, France and just have a great time. What do you need right now that you do not have to move your business to the next level? That's a very good question, Dr. Richards. And this is going to be the answer I'm going to give you. And I'm going to reach out. I'm actually going to say to all the entrepreneurs this, all right? Because a lot of times when entrepreneurs come to me, they go, oh, they need more capital. They need more investors. They need loans. Is what they tell me. And this is my answer to your question. I have everything I need to take my business to whatever level I want to. And you have everything you need, entrepreneurs, to take your business to the next level. You just have to put in the strategy to make it happen. Wow, that was an amazing value bomb. Suzanne, is there a social cause tied to your business? You know, the social cause that is that I have is eradicating entrepreneurial poverty, right? We were changing lives. We were changing legacies. And, you know, for every life change, you know, I remember one of the things that our team celebrated here in Houston was when PPP loans came out, right? Those were those forgivable loans, right? And we helped a lot of our clients get those. And I remember every time they a client got approved for PPP loan, because we were sending them from one institution to another financial institution. This one's got a long line. Go ahead and cut here. You know, we were like using some major strategy in this PPP loan. Every time a, 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 someone got approved for PPP, we would ring the bell. We would literally ring this bell. And it sounded like a New York stock exchange beam. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> we were just celebrating the wins of our businesses and our business owners. <laughs> if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. That is a really good question. If there was one question that I would ask myself and answer that question, it would be, what is the biggest game changer in your business? What is the biggest game changer in your business? And I'm going to go back to Simon Sinek on this one. I'm going to go back to Simon Sinek. And Simon Sinek says, you start with why. That is the biggest game changer. You always start with why. Why did you start your business? What do you want? And that will lead to the how to get. And tell us your why. My why? You know, there's a lot of different whys. You know, the mission of the business right now is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty, right? We were eradicating entrepreneurial poverty. When I started my business, because I wanted to spend time with Florence, I have to decide. I know one of the things that we're having an, a, 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 from a business strategic decision, it's probably going to get very deep on you, is, you know, there's something called the Pareto Principle. And what the Pareto Principle says is that, you know, you'll spend 80% of your time, resources, and energy on just 20% of your bottom line. And there's some lines of businesses that I absolutely love. I love, I love the clients. I love serving it. But for the 80% of the energy that it requires, it's robbing me from the opportunity cost of the 20% that I really want to do. In businesses, where you start from, where you start your business and your what you originally do is not necessarily how you're going to end up. And you constantly have to adjust and change and flux based upon that. What's happening now, and I can't really go in detail from the strategic standpoint of it, 
you know, we have to make some calls of our decision of what service lines we're going to continue, what service lines we're going to stop, because at the end of the day, even though we love it, it robs us from the opportunities to do what really our why at the end of the day, because we only have so many hours in a day, so many resources, and some are more, the margins are higher, the impact is more, and we have to decide, you know, sometimes it means leaving the things that you love behind. And who is your ideal client? You know, we work with multiple six and seven figure businesses. So our smallest clients are typically, they start at a half a million and they go up to 30 million plus. They range from manufacturing to engineering to law firms and physician offices. So it's always your entrepreneur because we, we, we work exclusively with entrepreneurs and business owners. And we do have a mastermind where we help teach them and help them implement profit first in their business as, lo- as well as, you know, because we are licensed CPAs, they're accounting and tax. We also do that too. So it becomes the all-inclusive profit first and, and helping them achieve their financial dreams. So then we've come to the part of our interview with Call Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the Fun Facts Lightning Round? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do this, Dr. Richards. <laughs> Last movie you saw. The last movie that I saw, and I loved it. It was Michelle Obama's movie, Becoming. I love that movie. Oh, my gosh. It was great. (laughs) You relax doing what? I relax. You know, I love reading. I love reading, and I love audiobooks. You know, I'm a nerd. I told you guys. I'm a nerd. (laughs) Your favorite singer or rapper? You know, you got to give it to the queen. You know, Beyonce, you got to give it to the queen. You know, I want to be Beyonce. (laughs) <laughs> your dance song. I, my favorite is, uh, girl, I have two left feet. That I was not given. So uh, if, this, if the music don't play, then I can shine. <laughs> I don't have a favorite song. <laughs> what food you eat every week, no matter what? I love hibachi. You know, lately we've been getting it, take it, you know, t- delivery, but I love hibachi. You know, that fried rice, that steak. I, I love <laughs> I love it. Your first job. My first job was my dad. Um, when I started working for him at 14, now I did quit him at 16, you know, because rallies, the burger place, they offered me like minimum wage. <laughs> but my first job was with my dad. <laughs> Workout or hit the couch? When you get in your 40s, health becomes everything. Health becomes everything. Energy becomes everything. So I would much, much more prefer working out. Definitely working out. And your favorite month? My favorite month is December. One, it's my birthday. Gotta love the birthday, right? Gotta celebrate me. (laughs) And then the other thing about it is it's just a time for renewal. It's a time to evaluate just how the year went, where your life is, to really start. There's something about that end and that beginning, right? Because it represents a new era, a new change, depending, or even a continuation if you decide to do that. So December. Suzanne, thank you so much for spending time with us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, why don't we share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and to do business with you and feel free to give your social media handles. Thank you, Dr. Richards. Um, the best way to connect with me is right here in our, our Facebook group, right? Profit First Masterclass with Suzanne Morega. Make sure it says Suzanne Morega because there might be a few Profit First groups out there. And we do, we have our weekly show where we teach you a new thing. Like I know last week we taught people how to apply for PPP loans, for forgiveness, if their loan was under 50K. And we have different, different trainings that happens in our Facebook group all the time. And plus it's a great place to network. We also have our Profit First Masterclass that takes place live right there on our our Profit First Masterclass with Suzanne Moringa Facebook group. So go ahead and go on Facebook, look for Profit First Masterclass with Suzanne Moringa, join our group, and you will interact with me face-to-face all the time. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you. It's been an honor to to be on your show today and to be able to interact with your, your listeners. Thank you. Our guests have sent us so much swag, books, and giveaways this year. I can't wait to announce our monthly winner. So if you want exclusive content delivered right to your inbox and to enter into our monthly drawing, go to drfrancisrichards.com and subscribe to our mailing list. That's drfrancisrichards.com. D-R-F-R-A-N-C-E. 
E-S-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S.com. That's drfrancisrichards.com. And subscribe to our mailing list. We promise we will not spam you or sell your information. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday and remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.